my, both of my parents' families, my father and mother's families, all lived in Berlin. It was 1933 when Hitler uh, came to power. Um, things got slowly worse and worse and worse for them. That was when this uh, a program started called the uh, Kindertransport, which is like children's transport, and allow children from infants to 17 um, the chance to uh, escape Nazi Germany and go to England. It was the only way in many cases that they were able to survive the war. But just think how hard it must be, must have been for the parents, it, how, how bad things must have been that the parents were willing and anxious to put their children into this program. So what a traumatic experience for all these young kids and their families um, to be put on a, to be separated from their parents, not knowing if they were ever gonna see them again, going to a country where they didn't speak the language, go having to go, living with people they didn't know, having to go to school in a foreign country in a foreign language. Over time, um, I think about 10,000 children uh, were, were saved because of the uh, Kindertransport. But uh, m most of the children who were evacuated under the, kinder the children's transport, most of their parents did not survive and they never saw them again. It turned their entire worlds upside down um, and, and sent their lives on a different tra trajectory entirely. It was a, a uniquely horrible time in history. Ted was born in Poland, uh, in Poznan, and uh, he was uh, maybe 12 years old in 1939 when um, the Germans invaded Poland, the Anschluss. Um, so he lived under occupied in occupied Poland, and uh, he spent um, some amount of time that I'm not sure of in um, camps in Poland. But in 1943, he was um, sent to. Um, a place called Middlebau, uh, Dura is the name of the camp, and uh, it was a cave complex um, used by the SS to uh, manufacture primarily the V-2 rockets. Alongside of uh, German scientists and engineers, many of whom ended up in our very town and, um, and helped us later with the Saturn program. And uh, I think that's part of Huntsville history that, um, you know, we need to remember uh, there's a dark side to um, the rocket program. He didn't talk a lot about his experience. When I asked him what he did at Dora, uh, he told me he was working on V2 rockets, and I said, you know, what specifically did you do? And he said, uh, I was a welder. And he winked at me and he said, I wasn't a very good one. And, and that was fairly common for the, uh, the prisoners. If they had an opportunity to sabotage a V2 rocket, they did but the price was very heavy. Um, if you were caught or suspected of sabotage, they would hang you uh, in, in the cave uh, so that all your friends could walk by you each morning as they went to work. Um, as the Allies got closer to Dora, they evacuated um, the prisoners there. Uh, Ted ended up in Dachau, and that's a place that I had been uh, when I was stationed in Germany. And um, so I knew that what that looked like. And um, I had asked him a lot of questions about, you know, he escaped. He escaped out of Dachau and um, walked south across the uh, Tyrol in, in, in the Alps into Italy. And, you know, I know the distance driving that. And uh, I asked him, you know, how did you do it? And, um, you know, how did you walk that far? And he said, it didn't matter, you know, I was free. We had run into this thing like a T in the road. We'd come up this road and all of a sudden there was nothing but this entrenchment, this encampment in front of us. Little spatially fortified area, almost as though they were making an effort to keep people out rather than worrying about keeping people in. And. Uh, and I think it was their experimental gas chamber. Well, I sat there for a moment when the officer tried to explore the building, maybe even to explore the railroad that was sitting on the siding with a load of boxcars, you know, sitting there. Now, the information I have is that 
Those boxcars were later discovered to be full of bodies, people who just died right there in the car. At, at that moment, uh, my officer is just reinforcing the basic philosophy. Wherever we roll across now, it's ours. We're gonna take it, we're gonna secure it. So I said, sure boss, no problem for this Sherman. You know, we just walked through it. And uh, I saw a stack of bodies, you know, that was the first thing that grabbed my eyes. It was, Here are body, bodies stocked like cordwood. And you say, oh my goodness, what his life brought me to. And then looking straight forward and here comes a body that didn't look much better, but able to approach me, walking towards me. And just as I do today, I get tired, you know, he did. He couldn't make it that hundred yards to get to me. And he sat down on a stone. We called for our medics to come in there and take over. Did the man survive? You'd like to know. I don't. We were considered to be Jewish. And my mother and father, they were executed. I don't know why, where, and when. Had a big armband on on one side, had a whip in one hand, and a pistol on, the, on, the, on one side. Came and he told me, he told my sister for me to take my pants off, drop my pants. And I was scared, I, I didn't know what they were gonna do. I was crying, and I, I know that. And I, I was very much afraid. But I never thought I was gonna make it to 13 or 11 to 13 or 14. I couldn't comprehend. It was beyond my comprehension of my age, you know, to have so many things that happen to a human being, you know, in such a short time. We were in the, uh, in bunks, they were three high. And I was the smallest, so I got the, the top bunk, the worst one. And the food, there was, the, there was nothing to eat. We hadn't had anything, no food. We had very, very little, a slice of bread. The hunger, the hunger, the hunger. Always to get something to eat. And that's the biggest pain that any human being can endure is the pain not having anything to eat. It was survive, survive, you know. And well, I was in Dachau, you know, so many times, you know, uh, people took their lives. They ran against electric fence, you know, or they were shot while they ran into, run into the electric fence. <sighs> from day to day, we prayed every day from day to day that we shall survive the bombing, we shall survive the atrocities from the SS and the Gestapo. And I said, I will survive, I will survive, no matter what, I did. When you meet people that have been through um, those kinds of things, it's remarkable to me how graceful they are and at peace they are. Um, Ted had every reason to uh, be angry with the world, um, but I, ne I never heard him say uh, ill about anyone. Forget, but you shall never forget. You shall never forget, but forgive. You must forgive. And let's all be brothers in some fashion. That's the best I can give you.